Hello there, Master Hellish here, and welcome to another army analysis. This one is the first in a series of Tau army analysis. So we're going to be looking at the HQ today. Again, I've got Arak with me. Thank you for joining us. No problem. Um, you've never played as Tau. Um, yeah, I have played as Tau again. You've played as everything. Uh, I have played as pretty much everything, but but back in third edition, the very first incarnation of Tau, uh, and they were way overpowered they just they yeah. just raped everything they, they they were very overpowered back then they've seemed to have a lot cut down since then they're a lot more balanced than what yeah. they used to be absolutely and you have to, and previously um a couple of editions ago you you could just go and do it without really thinking about it yeah you lay your firepower down everything would disappear pretty much now you have to think about it a little bit more yeah they're one of those armies that's not uh, I, I always think that the 40k armies fall into two categories you've got imperial guard um, Tyranids, that sort of space marines. They're armies where stuff can go wrong, where you can just play how you want, and you've still got a good chance of success. You haven't got to plan too much to some degree. Then you've got armies on the other side. You've got Eldar, Dark Eldar, Tau, uh, Necrons. To a degree. How you play them. Yeah. Wait, if everything doesn't go right, you can't win. No, yeah. You're just going to lose. If everything goes right, there's no stopping you. Indeed. Basically. Um... So we're going to look at that now, and we're going to look at the HQ section, and we're just going to talk about some of the things in here. HQ now goes on to two pa uh, three pages now. Yeah, that's the first I've ever seen where it does that. Yeah, um, but first things first, the one that lots of people love and I hate, Commander <laughs> Farsight. Yeah, he's a bit of a, an anomaly, really, In and I'm impressed I could say that word, in this sort of army, because in an army that's designed to stand back and shoot, he wants to get close yeah, I mean, damage. The, the whole Tau ethos is the the fact that they want to that, that they see um, close combat as primitive and mm. messy, and that's pretty much what he is. Yes, yeah, and I mean his Dawnblade is all right, but on that character, no, it's it, it's good. It's it, don't get me wrong, it's it's fine for what it is. But at that amount of points, he costs more than a Khan effect. He's he's a good healthy chunk of points. And yeah. he's not going to be making them back. I think the main reason most people take them is for his uh, his warlord trait, which uh, reduces the scatter when you're going to arrive, and that seven man bodyguard. People will load up with fusion that, blasters. That is good, good yeah, bodyguard. It is. They'll just pop in with that. I think that's the idea with him. He's a clean up crew. But it's not for me. It's not for everybody. Personal preference. Okay. Um, so moving away from that thing that I don't really like, <laughs> I'm not going to mention the name again. Uh, Commander Shadow Sun. Another good option. Um, she's not actually one I've ever played with or against, but I have seen a few battle reports with with her in. Um, I, I, I like the character. I read uh, I read Firecast um, and I read whatever the other one is with her in it. Oh, it was that good. Was it, it? it was fantastic. It was that good. Yeah. I, I've I've seen some stuff about this one too, mm -hmm. and she, she is good. Mm -hmm. And there's some good features in there, um, like you mentioned earlier before we started. It's the, the fusion blasters. Yeah. Um, pointing at two different targets. Yeah, that's fantastic. You can you can take out two tanks in one turn quite comfortably with her. But you have to be close to them. Fusion yes. blasters now, uh, with the new rules, you have to be within half range to get your extra that's size. Right. So you look at nine inches. I nine inches on a fusion blaster, which is really good compared to a lot of other things. They tend to be it twelve. Is, yeah. uh, tend to be six. But then having said that. They've still got a decent strength and AP at 18 inches. That is true. At a stretch, you can engage front armour of most Imperial vehicles, uh, not Imperial Guard, Space Marine vehicles, rather. Um, you can have got most Necron vehicles. Eldar vehicles will just crumble. Except obviously the, the monolith. Yeah. If you want to get in there and use that, though, you've got to get in close. And the one thing mm -hmm. that I think she's missing is the ability to deep strike. Yes, I agree completely. Infiltrate is nice, but it doesn't make up for it that much. The only thing really that's her saving grace is that stealth battle suit. You can infiltrate her forward into some cover, take advantage of the shrouded, um, and get yourself a nice high save, yeah. uh, and then wipe out a couple of tanks on the first turn. A couple of nice drones. The drones are nice. The drones are nice. If overpriced, perhaps. I mean, you, you throw them in and you've got a very expensive HQ unit, more so than Farsight. Mm. Um, and she's only toughness three. She doesn't herself have an invulnerable. Yeah, number of wounds is less as well. Yeah, I think she's probably... Obviously the drones will save her with their invulnerable, but before long she's going to get instant death, probably by a blast weapon, um, or a barrage weapon, which will completely ignore her cover save. Okay, so which one should we move on to next? Should we talk about the ethereals? Uh, yeah, we'll do the ethereals. There's um, 
or ethereal. There's a couple of different pronunciations. There's We're about seven the different <laughs> ones. Um, I, I used to call them ethereals. Right. Then I changed. Then I changed back, and now I think I've just because I just said it that way. That I think that means <laughs> I've changed again. Um, I can't decide, so I don't know um, if anybody can. We'll go with ethereal. Ethereal? We'll, yeah, we'll go with ethereal. Personally, um, going back to the previous rules on these ones, mm -hmm. I really disliked what happened if they died. Yes, they were awful. They they were a big liability in the, in the last set of rules. In this set, I, I quite like them. Yeah, I really do. Um, the upgrades they can take, the homing beacon, it, they're not worth having. You're paying the number of points that you're paying there entirely for invocation of the elements. Um, to have your fire warriors fire that extra shot, yep. brilliant. To be able to run and shoot, fantastic yeah, for town. That is brilliant. Um, the the feel no pain, not so much really, unless you've got a big squad of fire warriors, something like that. Um, and the final one obviously allows them to to not be gone to ground or to rally, uh, which is useful with town, believe me. Very useful. I mean, this the changes for this makes me think I might get one. They're good. They're they're for what they are. If you're a cheap points. HQ, that is a bargain. They're they're the, roughly the price of a kit out battle suit, if not cheaper. Um, but because I have an expensive mindset, if you're gonna take that one, you may as well take Anvar. Why is that then? His special invocation of the elements allows him to pick two. Right. Um, I believe, which is brilliant. You know, you can get two squads, for, or, or it might even be a a bubble. Um, but either way, he can put out a lot more firepower. He's got an armor save, mm -hmm. which is doesn't sound like a lot because it's only a five up, but it's very nice to have. He's yeah. got the extra wounds. He's considerably more survivable. The paradox of duality will your opponent will just hate it, absolutely <laughs> hate it, because the best way to kill a character is with a high strength weapon. Yeah, and he'll point and laugh with the two up invulnerable. That is that is quite good. That it is fantastic. Um, the two ethereal guard he gets. I realise I've just changed pronunciation again, but. They're not worth having, really. I feel like you're paying the points for him, and they're there just to take um, look out. Yeah, so. yeah, they are there just to take look out, so or stand slightly in front. Yeah, one of the two. I mean, it's worth noting that obviously, if they're if you're doing wound allocation from the front and you're standing at the front, mm -hmm. you don't have to worry about failing that roll. That's true. But let's see. Uh, is he a character or independent? Uh, he's a character. He's unique. Okay, so he's a unique character, but not an independent mm. character. And obviously, independent characters, you get that two plus. That's right. Yeah. For lookout sirs, so. I would actually step just a little bit further yeah, back. Yeah, him back. And that's what the guards are for. But I think he's just a fantastic... Bang him in a gun line of Fire Warriors, and you've got a really solid choice. And for such, only 100 points. Mm, yeah. It's great. You're not, you don't really need to kit him out with the uh, upgrade, so uh, for that stock Absolutely, price, yeah. it's, a good, it's a good points value. And it's the better. It's better than, I think, the more expensive version, are we? Um, it's, only, it's only 10 points more. It is a bit more. Uh, he's got the much, much better weapon skill, better initiative, better attacks. All fantastic so far. Yep. The blade master rule is brilliant. Mm. Honor blades, you can't go wrong with. Uh, but he's a squishy toughness three character. Yeah. All right. Yeah, you've got a shield generator, which I believe is the four plus invulnerable. Um, somebody with a thunder hammer is going to ruin your day. Also, you don't get your guards. You don't. No, you get no guards. He's he's just he's not worth throwing into combat unless you're fighting something like Gaunt's. Uh, other Tau, even even Necrons. I don't like his odds. No, because he's just so squishy. Yeah, no save at all. Uh, well, he gets the shield gem. Well, yeah, um, but you're only going to get that for so long. Yes, yeah. If it's fifty-fifty. At the end of the day, your opponent's only going to get two strength six attacks through, yeah. and there's a good chance you're dead. Yeah. Okay, so because we've bounced around a little bit, is it Dark Strider next? <laughs> it's Dark Strider. I love this character. You do. Everybody should take him. I have Necrons. I, I always play Necrons, and I've recently started taking Dark Strider and a squad of Pathfinders because I just think he is so fantastic. With your Necrons? With the Necrons, but even in himself, I would recommend for Tau. He's just brilliant. Um, he, he's just got your Pulse Carbine. He's nothing yeah. too special. Photon Grenades, Black Sun Filter. Standard stuff. I mean, he's Ballistic Skill 5, so that's nice to begin with. Um, I'm not sure why he's got three attacks. No, that's a bit weird, isn't <laughs> it? It doesn't make much sense to me. The structural analyzer is worth every point. Minus one toughness for your target. Not just for him, but for his squad. That doesn't seem like a lot when he's only got a pulse carbine, which is strength five, so it doesn't make too much difference. I put him in Pathfinders with the three rare rifles. Yep. Rapid fire with those, you get six shots of strength six, and you can instant death toughness four opponents. That's fantastic. That is a big, big thing. AP one, 
you're going to cause somebody a lot of headache with that. Um, and the fighting retreat special rule. Brilliant. Yeah. It, it, it all looks very good overall. Yeah. 100 points for one model. It, it's got some good rules in there that makes it worth it has, the points. Yes. The only thing I would say with him is he dies very quickly. Yeah. He's not a warlord. No, no. Um, that's a very good point. And with uh, a slightly lower leadership, then I, I, I like to have some good leadership. And, you know. Yeah, it's uh, personally I think if you're going to do it, if you if you want your infantry army, him and an ethereal is the way forward, or or your battle suit because everybody knows tower players love battle suits. <laughs> that's why we get. Them. <laughs> um, which brings us to rather a useless HQ character, I think. And Fireblade. The, Ironically, is, the one you play. This is the one I play, yes. <laughs> but the thing is, uh, you play him. Yes. And how many times has he survived past about turn two? He survived last battle completely. Which wasn't against me. That's true, it wasn't against <laughs> you. You know to take him out. Anybody who knows what he does will see that he's got a four-up save, no invulnerable, tough as three, and he'll be dead. He'll have a blast weapon on his face, yeah. and he'll be dead. He, he needs to be in with a group, well, he has to be in with a group of fire warriors. He does, yeah. But, well, I suppose it doesn't have to be Fire Warriors. Well, no, but... It's the best place for him. And with all the different <laughs> all the different rules and things that he's got, like uh, the, the, the Volley Fire and things like that, yeah. it's fantastic. The Volley Fire is good. If you max out big Blob of Fire Warriors, yep. Volley Fire could work. Especially if you get in Rapid Fire range. Yes, yeah, absolutely. If you get in Rapid Fire range of this dude and his squad, mm -hmm. you're, you're stuffed. Yeah, yeah, he's going to cause a lot, a lot of pain. Uh, I'm not really sure why he's got split fire. Really not. I don't know what they think one pulse rifle is going to do. Uh, it's because he's carrying a marker light. Yeah, arguably, yeah. Ballistic skill five marker light is nice to have. It, because um, marker lights uh, in, in various different places, you want to get the hits. If you want to make sure you get that marker light hit on something, yeah. bearing in mind, marker lights, unless it's a network one, mm -hmm. you can't shoot at the same thing with the same unit. So course, yeah. if he hits that, uh, that, uh, that squad that's approaching you, with that marker light hit, the rest of the unit can't take advantage of that. Mm -hmm. So that's why that comes into play there. It is in there, but it's worth noting you cannot use volley fire if he himself is going to fire. So it, it negates it's the advantage. One or the other, least. though, isn't yes, it? Yeah. Uh, but, though, having said all that, at 60 points... Yes, he is your budget HQ choice. If you're playing in a 1,000-point army, I would almost be tempted to throw him in instead of the ethereal yeah. for a bit more survivability as a warlord. Because he's also got, he's in there, he, he can quite easily join the, the, the squad of troops. Yeah. And uh, I, I quite like him. The he's, he's got some character. Yep, yeah, he has. I'll, I'll give him that. He's he got has some got character. some character to him. And it allows me to shoot more. Yes. <laughs> which is my favourite part. The model I'm not sure on, I understand he's holding a bonding knife in the air. He, he is holding a knife, yes. Which is ironic because he's horrible in combat and doesn't have the bonding knife ritual special rule. So I'm not really sure what Games Workshop was thinking with that one. It's probably just his pet or something. Yeah. But uh, no, I don't like models that brandish knives like that in the Tau army. I don't think in it's its sheath as well. Yeah. I think, I think the fact that it's in its <laughs> sheath shows the true Tau. I've got a blade. I'm not going to use it. Yeah. I'm just going to show it to you. It's from just range. it's just pretty, and I keep <laughs> it uh, on my mantelpiece. Um, but um, now to my favourite part. The commander. I think this is everybody's favourite, really. Bog standard commander. Yeah. You know, less points than a lot of the other HQs mm -hmm. that we've looked at. But that's a false economy, because he's not, is he? No, you have to pay for your <laughs> upgrades. But now in the new version, a lot of the upgrades are cheaper. They are a lot cheaper. And some of the upgrades that aren't cheaper have better range on the weapons. And they, they are better. And of course, he opens up your crisis bodyguard team. Which is it's always great. worth it because yeah. they can take the signature systems and mm -hmm. things like that, which are fantastic. They are very good. In recent battles, though, I haven't been taking the bodyguard team because of the amount of points that they are. Very often, I feel that I could buy, uh, and we'll come to it in another episode, the uh, battle suits, the mm -hmm. elite's battle suits. They're cheaper, yeah, and you get pretty much the same stat line. You don't get the high leadership and so forth, no. but you don't need leadership to fire a gun. You don't. I think the main reason anybody's going to take them is for the Swarm Protector rule. If your commander is very important to you as a person or, or just to your tactics, if he's got, if you've loaded him up with points, if he take all, you know, the, the signature systems, I know there's a couple you can take together, yeah. which are, are, are a fantastic combination, and, and you've just loaded your points into him, he's, you're going to really just break down and cry 
when he gets hit with a melter gun and dies. The only other option is to put your commander, because he's an independent character, you put him in with a squad of something else. Get yeah. him to join a squad. You've that, got that way, option. you've got your lookout, sirs. Two you plus. Have, have. He doesn't have to be at the front, and that's fantastic. Yeah. The only thing you've got to watch out for there, for example, if you want to try and just put him on the side of some pathfinders, they don't automatically confer their special rules to each no, other, no. so you lose your uh, ability to infiltrate if you're doing that at the very start of the game and things like that. But attaching the commander to a, a, a squad of something else, if you can't afford the body, to, uh, the crisis team. It's a good way of doing it. It is a good way, and he, he does make a good lone wolf. He's got a decent ballistic skill. He's got enough wounds to take a little bit of punishment. Yep. Um, I would say either shield drones or a shield generator is a must. Yes. You don't really have a choice on that. Definitely, if he's uh, on his own. It, yeah, if he's on his own. Uh, and you can just kill him out with, with three weapons. I believe he gets four to four in total. So you, you put your, uh, your shield gen on, or your drones, and then you get the four, but that tends to get expensive. And then you either give him two twin link weapons, or a twin linked and a single, or three singles if you fancy a bit of range and then yeah, you're close. Yeah, you never used to be able to do that in the past. You no. can get three single weapons, but you can still only fire two of them. That's right, yeah. And I know a lot of people tend to take a, a, the missile pod, yeah. uh, a flamer, and a plasma rifle. You take the pod I think range. it's a good good combination. You get your pod as you're going in. Mm -hmm. Your plasmas come into, re into your mid-range. You get up close. You're still using your pod, and you get your t rapid fire on your plasma. Yeah. And then when you get very close, you get the you've got your flamer. Or if yeah. somebody's a Assaulting you, you get that wall of death, which is great. that wall of death is fantastic. It mm -hmm. saved uh, my commander's bacon in the last <laughs> game I played. Yeah, um, he was about to get assaulted by a pretty nasty creature. What exactly what it was escapes my memory, but the 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 actually wall, of <laughs> boof, yeah. nothing got through it there as well. It did very well. I mean, you, th the other option you've got really for them, if you want to keep the points relative, uh, I believe you get uh, two two crisis bodyguard. You take the pair of them. You take the commander, you give them all two single plasma rifles, you've got a hell of a lot of firepower. So it's not really a massive cost, they're very mobile with that jetpack infantry special rule, they can they can get around the board very quickly and god they kick out some pain. As long as you roll well in your assaults then, yes. yes. Yeah. And um, also uh, the new rules like you said about being able to fire two plasmas, mm -hmm. before if you would put the two plasmas on they had to be a twin link That's weapon. Right, yeah. Not anymore. More chance of hitting with two weapons. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, if you've got the points, by all means, go for twin linked and then a single as well. You could you do know, that. Really up your ch chances. You'll wipe out a squad of pretty much anything with that sort of firepower. I mean, you're looking six shots there. If you get a rapid fire, that's 12, and they're AP2. Yeah. It's really going to cause some damage. Well, there we go. We've uh, gone through the HQ of the uh, Tau Army. We've had a good look. If you agree with what we say, brilliant. If you don't, then that's also brilliant. <laughs> Put your comments, opinions, questions in the in, down and below in the comments, and we'll uh, we'll have a look at them sometime soon. But thank you very much for listening, and uh, until we see you next time, goodbye. How was that? That was quite long, but then we had a few bloopers at the start, and it was quite big. And yeah, it's a big, big section. We did have a big one. <laughs>